Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So we are making this, this is icing. <laughs> We're making this little gingerbread man for Christmas. Let's get started. So I am going to use the green sparkly stuff with the four millimeter, which is a G hook. Anyway, make a slip knot. We're going to chain eight. You're going to single crochet seven. That takes you right back up to the very beginning. Chain one and turn. And for the next four rows, you just can put one single crochet in each stitch, including this very first one. Because you want to keep your sides straight. So make sure you're getting into that first one and the very last one. So make sure you have seven stitches every time. And then you've got this last one, it's a turning over stitch. Make sure you're getting into that one too. So that's my four rows. So you can fasten off. Uh, fasten off with a bit of a tail because we're going to make the bow part. You don't need a whole lot. So nice and quick little project. Tuck this guy in. So we just want to scooch over to the center of this. I know with seven stitches we don't really have a center, but get as close as you can to what looks like the center. You're going to kind of fold this. Actually fold it backwards. Fold it so the good side's over here. And you're going to wrap the center. As many times as you want. Depends on how much tail you cut off or whatever. So once you've got it wrapped how you want it, I'm just going to stick my hook, my needle, under all my wrappings and I'm going to make a knot. It's pretty tight. I wrap it pretty tight. <laughs> so I'm going to make a knot so that doesn't come undone. So that's my bow. I can scooch that over a bit. So there's my bow. I'm just going to leave this tail for sewing to him when I get to that point. So that's already made, done, out of the way. So now we can move on to the gingerbread man. So before we start making our doll and using this yarn, we need to cut a piece that we can sew up the crotch with later because once we get into our roll we're not going to be able to use what we need so let's cut a sewing piece now now let's get start building the doll so you can use whatever color you want I use this rust color because I thought it was as close to gingerbread color as it could be that's the color of it is rust um, I'm not sure what it is. It could be that Equality brand from Michaels or it could be Karen. I'm not sure. It's it's really soft. It's worsted. So I'm going to use my 4.5 millimeter. 
And we're going to start building, we're going to build the legs and then we're going to sew that together and build the body. So the legs are attached to the body. Arms are separate. The head is attached. The arms are the only thing that it's built separate from the body and then stitched on. So, and, and I, I usually always do that, but this one here, I didn't sew the tops shut. I just sewed around with it open. So that's how I got that look. So let's begin. I'm going to make a magic ring and you're going to put six single crochets inside the ring. That's my six. So you're gonna need a stitch marker because I'm gonna I'm gonna do this amp groomy style. Sorry, I'm gonna lose my voice. I still have this cold. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're gonna put two single crochets in each stitch around for a total of twelve. So I'm just gonna count to twelve. I'm not gonna use my stitch marker yet. But if you are, it goes in after the first stitch, not the second one. Six, eight, ten, and twelve. That I went over. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think this might actually be Havana White's. I don't remember what it's called. Havana White's uh, yarn series is what I think this might be, which is also really, really nice worsted yarn. So uh, your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. This is where I'm going to use my stitch marker. That's my one single crochet. And then my increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. One single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet. So at the end of this you should have 18 stitches. So for the next 10 rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So if you don't have one of these guys, you should get one. This is a row counter. You can buy it on Amazon. Dirt, dirt cheap. So um, I will leave you to your 10 rows. And then I'm going to put my the pattern up to make the other leg so you can make the other leg. And then I'll meet you back after. I'm just trying to save time on this video. So I have my 10 rows done. Um, so fasten off, I have my other leg done. Um, fasten off on your first leg, but don't fasten off on your second leg. So when you fasten off um, on your first leg, I want you to go through the next stitch and I want you to pull this in so that your fasten off spot's not as noticeable and you can pull down on that knot a little bit and then even it up. So once you're ready, so I'm going to put my two, so this is normally where I would have fastened off and that's my fasten off spot. So I'm going to kind of put those together because, let's pull this out. And what I mean by kind of is I got to leave this out because I got to use it, but I want to put this into the middle because it's a horrible spot, even though we do what we do, it's a horrible spot. And I don't want it to impede what I'm doing around here. So I am going to try to even this up as best I can. And I'm going to put 
this in there to signify where I want these legs to go together. So now I know what I'm working with. So I'm going to mark my next stitch. So this is going to be the back of the body because this is where I'm going to be doing everything. So I'm just going to mark that as my next stitch. So your, um, your next round um, is just going to be just one single crochet around because we're just going to attach the legs. So put your first stitch in with your marker. I've got one more stitch before my thing. I don't know what you have and it doesn't matter what you have. If you have a stitch here, then use it. If you have two there, use them. If you have none there, then don't worry about it. I have a stitch, so I'm going to go into that. Now, all depending on how far apart you want the space between your legs. Um, I only chained four, but chain however many you want to separate your legs. So after my chain four, I'm going to come across to the first usable stitch on this side, which is not going to be that because it's where I fastened off before. So I'm just going to go right into the next stitch beside it and then kind of keep everything tight. And I'm just going to attach with a single crochet and then I'm going to single crochet my way around to the other end to the other side. So our stitch count is going to be different all depending on what you just did. So I'm not going to be giving you, uh, I mean, I may give you numbers. I, it, they may not match yours and that might be the reason is because I have no idea what you're doing. I don't know how many stitches you chained for the leg space or anything else though. So I'm going to go around to the last stitch that I can work before. So I'm into that one with my marker. So I'm going to chain four here. So I match the other side and I'm going to go into the first stitch that I can work on this side. And then I'm just going to continue single crocheting back around. So now these chains that we just did, you're actually going to have to get into the stitches. So you can undo this now if you want. So we're going to have a hole in the crotch to sew up. But that cannot be avoided. I'm going to take this off. So um, I just had to turn up the light of my camera since it just got really dark in my room. We got tornado warnings out so it got really really dark. So I'm back around and my next uh, round is going to be just one single crochet in each just so you get a base of a count but then we need to uh, decrease so you have to go into so that's oh I put that in the wrong one that's number one. I I have to actually get into these chains. So um, I have this one before my chains. So I'm going to start decreasing now that I'm back around. Now, um, the last time I did this, I wrote my counts down as I had 36. So your next round is going to be a decrease round. 
um, so that our legs kind of spread apart like this. So that's number one. You're going to do two single crochets and then a decrease. And again. Two single crochets and decrease all the way around. So your next eight rounds, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of those however many stitches you have. And I will see you on the other side. So I don't have all my eight rows done. I've got three done, but this piece that we cut at the beginning of the video, we're going to have to use it now to sew up the crotch so we can start stuffing it. So I'll make a slip knot. on one end and on the other end we're going to thread our needle so you have to make sure this is exactly how you want your legs to be or they're gonna come out funny now, I've gotten my legs funny before where it feels like I'm always got one twisted so I'm going to, I probably got way too much. I'm going to pull it until I get to my loop and then I'm going to use that slip knot. You don't have to pull tight. So you just want this together. You don't really need it tight or anything. Um, you can make a double knot here if you don't really want to spend a whole lot of time weaving. You can make a really tight knot on the bottom. So just make sure everything's even before you start sewing, but we want to be able to get this sewn together so we can stuff it before we get to our eight rows. So I'm just whip stitching. We have tornado warnings out and the neighbor's cutting his lawn. Didn't expect that or else I would have shut my doors and windows. Sorry. Tend to keep my doors and windows open when there's tornado warnings. So if you can hear the lawnmower, I apologize. Nothing I can do about it. it certainly wasn't expected. But that's Canadians. We're so used to this weird weather that we just go ahead and ignore it. For the most part, I think. So make sure you're getting all the way down this leg. It's gonna go in this way. I don't want to sew anything together that I'm not supposed to be sewing together. I don't really want that bump there, so I'm thinking if I just pull up. No, not really. I always end up with a bump on my leg when I do this and it drives me nuts because I don't know why. So, um, I'm just going to come back out the crotch. I'm going to weave in after I stuff it. So I'm going to put some stuffing in. So I think that's enough for now. Um, I don't want it to be hard to hold, so I'm not going to really stuff too far up into this area. But I am going to, oh my gosh, I'm all tangled around my 
my actual there so I am now going to use the stuffing to weave down into and around This one here we tied a knot, so we just have to stick it down into the leg. It says not to go in anywhere. There. So now I can continue. So I've got my eight rows done. Um, we're going to do one more row and then we're going to sew some buttons on. So this next row is going to be, well, this one's going to be weird. So I want you to do a two single crochet decrease six times. That's two single crochet decrease. Now this may take you back to your marker, but it mine didn't when I initially made this. Um, I still had three other extra stitches I had to fill which I just put single crochets in so that's why I said decrease six times so two single crochet decrease six times I'm not even counting. The rain started coming down and we have tornado warnings out. So my mind's listening for stuff. My, my head's listening for stuff. I'm not even counting. I'm just going to keep doing my two single crochet decrease. Yeah, so that took me um, to where I had three stitches left, which I just put regular single crochets into so that is that so we're gonna put buttons on at this point um actually do do one more row because I, I kind of need a little bit higher I don't have a whole lot of room right here um your next row is gonna be one single crochet in every stitch so I think I have 21 stitches I don't know what you have because I don't know what you did down here but um, and then we'll put the buttons on so I'll see you back here after your round is done all right so I'm back around I might have to turn my light up again because it's getting super dark in here all right so we need to find three small little buttons. I've got just a gambit of buttons, but they don't all fit the needles that I have. So find your three buttons. I gotta get some, I'm just gonna use th um, really thin yarn because I've got th these needles. I need need to find needles small enough to go through some of these tiny little holes. Mine don't all go through. Oh, that one did. So because it's Christmas, I got a red one, a green one, and a funny looking one. So I have this really thin 2 weight cotton I think I'm just going to use. So I'm just going to tie this at the back so I'm not, um, I'm not going to pull it all the way through. I want to leave some for tying. So I'm just going to treat it like a regular, what am I stuck on? There we go. I'm going to treat it just like a regular button. 
I don't know how you do your buttons, but I, uh, I probably got too much yarn. So I'm just going to tie a knot to secure my button. That's generally what I do with buttons. So I can just drop that crap down in there. I don't know if using black was the best idea. So go ahead and sew your buttons on. And then we can do the um, uh, bow tie in the next couple of rows. And that's already made, so we're flying right along. So I just did a one single crochet decrease and I thought I was doing it on camera but my camera died and I didn't hear it beep at me so one single crochet decrease I just did all the way around. I think one more row I might be able to get that button on. Um, I just my buttons are bigger than my other buttons, so I may not get the other button on. Um, so this row is going to be eight single crochets. This is to just take you around to the back. So now I'm going to do a decrease and then I'm going to single crochet back around, which is five for me, whatever your numbers are, I don't know. So that gives me the number that I needed to have, which was 14. So I wanted to have a number that was divisible by two, first of all. Um, so I can get my other one here, but then, I don't know. So your next round is one single crochet in each stitch, and then I might, I might have room for my bow, because we start the head right after that, so I kind of don't have a choice. I either put the other button on, or I don't. So you should, well, I, I have 14 stitches, I'm just going to say you should. One single crochet in each stitch, and then we're going to start with the head. So whatever you can fit in. If you can get the bow on now on yours, then now's the time. So I don't think I'm getting both on. It's going to be really tight for me to get both on here. So I may just do a bow. I may not put that button on. So I'm going to sew my bow on then because I don't have enough room. But if you have enough room then that's great. You're going to get three buttons and a bow. I'm going to get two big buttons and, a, and my bow. <laughs> So, figure out where you're going to put your bow. It should be right up at the neck, which means it should get in your way while you're crocheting. So, sew your bow on any way you want. Don't take lessons from me. I suck at sewing. So, I'm just going to pull really tight. I want to make a knot. So I just did that and I made a knot. So I'm going to put some stuffing in this. Alright, so I've got my doll stuffed. I might have him a little overstuffed. So we're going to start with the head. So we're going to put two single crochets in each stitch. So that's number one. No, I just marked the wrong one again. Why do I keep doing that? 
So two in each, two single crochets in each stitch round. So oh, that's my two single crochets. I keep making a mess out of my bow. Move this needle. So I know it's squishy, but this is the only way I could get a nice round head. So you're going to do three single crochets and an increase. I tried not making it too bad as far as the increases because it is going to get squishy, squishy. So that's one, two, three, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So I didn't get my whole sequence in. My last two stitches were just single crochets. No big deal. So for the next seven rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch. And uh, then we'll get to do decreasing and pretty soon we're going to be done. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. Four single crochets and a decrease. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. Three single crochets and a decrease. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. You can stuff this at any time. So I'm going to put some stuffing in mine before I uh, get carried away and I'm going to put my eyes on. So I decided to put my eyes on. I'm putting them between the 8th and 9th row from the neck. That's 8 and 9. So that's where I put my one. Now this, these aren't as... Um, my eyes aren't as big as the last one, so. so they're not going to look as good. So I'm, I've got, I still got more rows to do, so I'm not going to continue to stuff it yet. Uh, next row is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. So if you have an extra stitch just like me, just put one single crochet. So we're going to do that again. That'll bring us down to eight stitches and then we can fasten off and sew the top shut. 
So one single crochet, decrease one more time. I do knit this way because it gives a better look to the head. Not that we're putting icing on top, but... So I'll go into the next stitch, fasten off, you just need enough to sew the top shut. So if you think your head needs some more stuffing you can go ahead and do that now. I'm probably going to add a little bit more to mine and then we'll sew the top shut. There, my head's nice and round. I don't want to overstuff it. So, sew the head up. You're just going to go into this, in this way, out that way. In this way, out that way. Just picking up one piece of yarn. And I only have one more stitch. I'm going to go in and then I'm just going to pull, pull that shut. And I'm still going to come across and make a knot. Come across and then go through this loop. Pull back and forth. That tightens that knot up. And then I'm going to weave. So when I do, it kind of pulls down on this top part a little bit. I don't want your head to be flat though. So when you're weaving, go in as close as you can to your lead and go in different directions. That way it just looks like a stitch. If you go in really close, push down, cut off. Here's your guy. So we're going to need a long piece of black to make the mouth. You're going to tie a knot on one end. Make it a double knot if you want. So it doesn't matter where you come in, it just matters where you go out. All kinds of polyfill fiber. So go in wherever, we're first going to make the, the smiley part. So come out wherever you want to make this line for the top of your mouth and then you're going to go down to where you want your mouth to be. So when you pull, you've got that line for your mouth. So now you can come back up as close as you can to that line, but when you come, you're going to come across to make the other line, so you got to make it even to where your mouth line is, and try not to get tangled. Hopefully you already know how to do this, so, so there's my smiley mouth, one side of it. Turn this upside down it's easier probably not for you so again try to make it even um, with your other smiley mouth so I came down to about here so you want the line going this way and then I'm gonna pop out where my other part of my mouth is so that makes my line go across this way and then I come back up and now I'm just going to pop out wherever. It doesn't matter where I pop out. So when I pull, I got my other line on that side. So that's my smiley mouth. That's how you do one of those. And then you can make a knot. And then you're going to push these two down inside the head. So 
you just need a little nubby. You don't want it too short because you don't want the knot to come undone inside the doll. And then you're just going to push that down inside. So that should go nowhere. There we go. So moving on to the arm. It's about as fast as the legs were. So you're going to make a magic ring. And you're going to put six single crochets inside. Pull that tight. You're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around. So I'm just going to count to 12, but if you want to use your stitch marker, it goes in after the first stitch. So that's my 12. Your next row is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So that's one single crochet. Your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So for the next 10 rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. Stuff it, but don't sew the top shut like we would normally do. Build your second arm. I will put everything on the screen and I will meet you back here and we'll sew them on together. So I'm done my 10 rows. I'm going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to fasten off with a sewing tail. So go ahead and make your second arm following my screen prompts. And I'll meet you back. We can sew it on, stuff it. Alright, so I got both my <clears throat> little arms, so I'm not sewing the top shut. So we're going to sew it on just like this, so hopefully you have a hook needle or something that would be a little more helpful than just a regular straight needle. So the ones I use have a hooked edge. I got them on Amazon. You can buy everything on Amazon. So I'm going to show you this but I, I, I'm not going to be able to complete it with you. The side where you fastened off here, I would put that more at the back I think than anything but determine where you're putting your arm. I would leave a neck gap. That's what I did with my last one. And then I just went in as close as I can to my arm. I went into the doll and I came up into the stitch so that's I'm doing an invisible stitch so when I pull up, um, the stitch disappears and gets sucked underneath the arm, so you can't see. 
So that's how I'm going to do my sewing all the way around. You may have another way. Um, <clears throat> I don't sew well, so taking lessons from me is probably not a super smart thing to do. You should probably pin this too, which I didn't bother to do. And I'm probably going to regret it. So doing up in here is <coughs> a little tougher. You really need a, a needle that has that hooked edge on it. So I'm just about back around to the beginning. And when you're satisfied, You can weave in three different directions, they say. I always like to add my little knot at the end as well, and then tuck it down inside the doll. And that knot is suggested that the knot will get caught on the stuffing. I can't even get it in there. How am I trying to get it in? There we go. Helps if I was trying to push it down the right hole. So jam it down there into the stuffing. So you can go ahead and sew your other arm on and then we'll get to decorating our cookie. So I'm just coming to the end of sewing my second arm on. I used pins for this one and it didn't even matter. It still moved around. My other pin. There we go. My button's a little loose. I'm going to have to fix that. So, um, decide what colors you want to decorate these with. And then get your white so we can do the candy icing, candied icing, sprinkled icing for the top of the head. And I will see you right back here. All right, so we're going to do the icing on top of the head. I'm going to use a 4.5. This is not worsted. It's just regular four weight yarn. So I'm going to do a magic ring and I'm going to put six single crochets inside. Now you don't really need a stitch marker. This is not going to take very long at all. So in your first stitch, you're going to put a single crochet. If you want to put a stitch marker, you can. The next stitch, you're going to put two half double crochets. Two of them in the same space. The next stitch, you're going to put two double crochets. Sorry, two triple crochets.
So that's my two triples. The next stitch gets one half triple. So yarn over twice like you're doing a triple. But you're going to come through two and then you're going to come through all three. That's a half triple. The next stitch gets two half doubles. The next stitch gets a double. Move it on. Next stitch. So we're not slip stitching, we're not, we're just going to continue to go around. The next stitch gets two doubles in the same space. The next stitch gets three half triples in the same space. The next stitch gets three triples. The next stitch gets two half doubles. The next stitch gets two doubles. The next stitch gets three triples. So try not to pull tight on any of this. So it will lay flat. Your next stitch is going to get three doubles. Next stitch gets three singles. The next stitch gets two half doubles. The next stitch gets two triples. The next stitch gets two singles. You can pull up on those singles a little bit too. If you're finding that it's not doing this, that means you're pulling too tight. The next stitch gets two doubles. Next stitch gets two half doubles. Next stitch gets one triple. The next stitch gets two half triples. The 
next stitch gets one triple next stitch gets two half doubles next stitch gets three singles next stitch gets two triples next stitch gets two doubles. We're almost done. Next stitch gets two singles. Next stitch gets two doubles. Next stitch gets two singles. <laughs> Next stitch gets two triples. Next stitch gets one triple. Oops. Next stitch gets a single. So pull up on this loop before you make it. And try to keep it high. Two half doubles in the next one. And then you're going to finish your last stitch with three single crochets. And we're not slip stitching into anything. We're just going to leave that hang in there like that. We're just going to fasten off with a long sewing tail. Probably didn't need to be that long, but. So we just kind of left that hanging. So you can go ahead and hide your end, get your colors, so we can put our candy pieces or our sprinkles in here. Whatever colors you're going to use here, it's probably a good idea to use here. That's what I did for this. So even though his bow tie is green, I don't think I'm going to use green because it's just really, really thin and I don't much care to use it. I'm going to use my glittery purple and my glittery pink. Pull that out from the middle. So just cut a long piece. You could probably do all the little candy pieces in one long piece. Don't have to tie it at the end or anything because I was getting sewn to the head so I doubt very much anything's going to happen to it but if you prefer to make a knot you can, it's not going to hurt anything. So just go around and make your little candy pieces or your little sprinkles, whatever they are, candy pieces and sprinkles and Get my tail out of the way. And that's all you're going to do. You're just going to go to different spots. Make your sprinkle pieces. So you can make as many or as little as you want. It's all up to you. There's no rhyme or reason, just make sure you don't do what I just did and get your sewing thing stuck. So I try to keep it all loosey-goosey so this doesn't fold in half. So that's probably good for my pink. I'm just going to cut it off. You can make a knot or do whatever you're going to do. I'm just going to cut mine off. And then grab some purple. You could probably even tie this together at the back, I guess, if you wanted to. So 
that's probably good enough for me. So you just need to figure out how you're gonna sew it on. I'm gonna try to stay in the white when I sew because um, I don't want it to pull the I don't want it to pull the stitches that close to the head. So I'm just gonna stay on this side of the stitches. Make sure you're getting down into that doll. Here we go, my little icing. My little icing uh, hat. Hmm. So I'm just going to weave along the top. And I weave back and forth. I go down into the doll. Put my head back into shape. So tie your knot. Just to secure. Just in case somebody might try to rip your frosting hat off. Jam that down there. There we go. So now you can take your frosted things for your arms and your legs and stuff. A decently long piece. One end is going to get a knot. That's going to be what you jam down into the doll. So, um, I'll do my feet. I'll do my feet pink. So it doesn't matter where you come in, it just matters where you come out. So come out wherever you're going to come out. I know my needle's probably hard to see. So remember, it's getting pushed down into the doll, so. So you need to figure out where you're gonna do your jagged edges. So wherever you want this to go, that's where you're gonna go in, and then you're gonna go out where you want your next point to start. To make that, then you're gonna go back into that same hole, and you're gonna pick up the post. So now that makes a V. So now you're going to come up to this shared hole and you're going to pick up that post. And you're going to just keep doing that. Go back down here, pick up that post. If you want it bigger, you can pick up two posts. So now I got two V's. Come back up here, pick up that post. So if you want this bigger, then just go through two posts. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way to the end. Well, all the way around. Now, we, we did do this in amigurumi, which means that um, this is going to be a spiral. So we do need to drop it down once we get back around to close to where we started. So that's what mine look like. Um, you can do bigger ones. Um, and we'll do bigger ones up here. On the hands. Make sure my needle's not gonna. So if you want yours, like I said, if you want yours bigger, you're just gonna pick up two posts as opposed to one post. So we're coming back around 
and I'm not going to be even now. I'm going to be up higher. So because I'm in between legs, so it's kind of a hidden thing. Instead of coming down to where I would normally come down, I'm going to go into that same hole there, but I'm going to come down one. So instead of picking up this post, I'm just going to scooch down one so that I end up even. And the same thing with the top. So I would normally, I would normally pick up that post, but I'm going to come down on a diagonal to change my direction. So it will be noticeable. That's why I wanted it in between the legs. So now I can come down and continue what I was doing. So when you come back around to where you started, just go up and pick up that post. Like finish like you would normally just finish. And this should go down like this to finish it. So I'm going to go down, but I'm just going to pop out somewhere. You really don't actually need to tie a knot here. I'm just going to press down and, and cut it off. Now this here, obviously, gets jammed down. There. Number one icing on our leg. This is probably the funnest part of making this whole gingerbread man is decorating it. So after you come up into the doll, you're going to go down where you want it to come down. And you're going to go up next to it. So that's how we begin. So once it's at the top again, you want it to come down to the bottom. And this is where we start picking up the posts. So now I'm going to pick up that bottom post to make a V. And I'm going to pick up the top post. So like I said, if you want it bigger, grab two posts. You grab two posts and you're going to have, it's going to look like that is what it's going to look like. Bottom post. Top post. And then you just go back and forth like that. Bottom post, top post. So I'm coming back around. I forgot to um, um, start where it was going to be hidden where I do my my direction change, but I'll just have to wait till I'm just about there. I don't want it to be that noticeable. Kind of getting close though. So I'm going to come down on the diagonal here. I don't know if you can hear that wind or not. So tornado warnings out. It's moving my door. I have a French door on my office area here. So I'm going to pick up this last post. I'm going to come down where I should be coming down to pick up a post and then I'm just going to scooch out wherever, wherever I pop out. And that's the icing for that leg done. So I'm just going to press down on my doll and cut that off. And I'm going to poke that down. So we did that for the icing for the bottom of the feet. So now let's do the wider icing for the hands. So I'm going to get my purple. So if my hydro goes out, I apologize ahead of time. 
can't really hide my change when I drop down and do that change. Can't really hide it on the arm, so I guess it really doesn't matter where you go in. So I'm just going to go in. Hopefully I can do it in here so it's at the back of the doll, so I'm going to go in somewhere around here, maybe here. Up one more. Three, four, five. So we're going to do big ones this time. So I'm going to go down into where I want this to go, but then I'm going to pop up into the stitch right beside where this came from. That's how I'm going to start it. So now I'm going to come down I'm going to pick up two. So now this isn't as wide this way as my feet, but because it's going to be fatter. So I'm going to pick up two posts now. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick up two. Sorry, just making sure you can see what I'm doing. So, that's what it's going to look like. Mine's kind of on an angle like that. Yours doesn't have to be. You can do whatever you want. Just trying to make mine look different from the other one that I did. So it's kind of a mess back there when you do that, but it is only decorating of a gingerbread man. <laughs> I'm doing better with this than I would icing, let me tell you. So I'm going to make this a smaller nubby, I don't need that much, I'm going to poke that right down in there. One more hand I'll do with you because I know how easy this can be to screw up. So I'll come down to where you want to go back and forth and come back up next to your thing. And then you can start picking up the posts. be quite difficult to show you on camera so hopefully I'm doing all right I think I was totally off camera so I'm going to have to scooch down. So, it's not the best looking transaction in the world, but I don't have too many options when you build something in a spiral and you're trying to do something like this. Not too many options out there for perfection. Not when I don't know how to sew. go. There we go. All done. My feet are a little different. All finished. And I sewed my other button on better. So, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.